already in the blood. We welcome the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the May 4th, 2017, 17, uh, the victory, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this double jubilee year, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. For Jesus, you are a jubilee in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the year of miracles, Lord, the month of miracles, manifestations, Lord, in the mighty mouthless match in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for we are, we are already in your rest, Lord. Seven resembles rest, completion, and perfection. That is your favorite number, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. But on the seventh day, you sanctified and you rest, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Thank you, Lord, for making the earth in six days, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for being the Rhema Word and the Logos Word of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your miracle-working abilities, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love, because with your love, all with your love, it's everything. everything is possible, Lord. Without your love, we profit nothing, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that amazing gift, for the manifestation of your love that's revealed in your Son, Jesus, who is the mediator between God and man, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for our faith, for without faith we cannot please you, Lord. It's impossible to please you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, for grace, we have, for grace, even though we don't deserve it, it's a merit of favor, and uh, thank you, Lord, for giving us that grace, because grace is the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for by grace we are saved through faith in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for each and every soul that's joining on this Bible study line, each and every soul that's on Bible studies line across the nations that's doing the will of the, the will of the Father, Lord. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to align us up your perfect will today, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us move out, Lord, and you move in, Lord. Break us, prune us, Lord. Shape us and mold us because you are the potter, Lord, and we are the clay, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are the uh, vine and the true husbandman, Lord. You are the tree of... Uh, tree of uh the tree of uh, righteousness lord in the name of jesus christ jesus christ you are the tree of life lord in the name of jesus christ let us focus and stay in the spirit lord in the name of jesus christ for the spirit is greater than the flesh lord in the name of jesus christ lord i ask lord we surrender lord our spirit soul and body to you lord in the mighty mouth of the name of jesus christ the earth is yours and the fullness of lord in the name of jesus christ we submit to your perfect will lord we surrender lord and we repent lord for our known and unknown sins lord our omissions and commissions and, Lord, we ask for forgiveness for our known and unknown sins and our omissions and commissions. Renew our mind, Lord, with the blood of Christ, Lord, with the word of God, Lord, with the sword of the Spirit, Lord. Lord, I believe everyone that's under the sound of my voice will have uh, a testimony today, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll have a revelation today in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll have supernatural peace in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll do all things according to Christ Jesus who strengthens us, Lord, for we are your crown jewels, Lord. You are the bridegroom and we are the bride, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We, we have to continue to stay clean without a spot or blemish, Lord. Keep us to stay clean without a spot or blemish, Lord. Keep our lamps lit like the five wise virgins, Lord, to your glorious return, Lord, that rapture return, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Keep us, Lord. Keep us and guide us and keep us in that Lamb's book of life, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We give you glory, honor, praise, and worship, Lord. All the credit belongs to you, Lord. All the talents that you give us, all the gifts that you give us, all the crowns that you give us, we lay it at your feet right now, Lord Jesus. Christ. Yes. We lay it at your feet. We're, make, we're here to make prayer and supplication, Lord. We're here to make prayer and request unto you, Lord. We're here to feed you praises with the sacrifices, with the fruit of our lips, Lord. We offer our bodies as living sacrifice, Lord. You said to obey the call and you'll give us your all, Lord, and that's what we've been doing. We're obeying, we have been obeying, Lord, and I know you said you're going to give us your, uh, you're going to give us your all, Lord. You stand on your promises, Lord. You're a man of your promises. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the God man of your promises. Lord, 100% God and 100% Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to live like uh, men, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And also, thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to live like supernatural beings, Lord, for we're not natural, we're supernatural, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We're spirit-speaking beings, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We're here to bring heaven down to earth, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Just like Jesus 2,000 years ago brought heaven down to earth, Lord, you're, you're asking us to do the same, you're telling us to do the same, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to stretch out our arms and bring heaven down to earth, Lord. We're going to take from the hand of love. We're going to take freely from the hand of love in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being that hand of love, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being the author and finish of our faith, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for being our Abba Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being the love of our life, the love of our soul, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being our first love, our true love, the love that never broke our heart, Lord, the love that restored our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for being a savior, a healer, a deliverer. Thank you, Lord, for letting us uh, walk into your resurrection power, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this month of grace, Lord, this month of peace, Lord, this month of the month of favor, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. You give me praise, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to anoint the prophet of God, lift tonight, his ears tonight, his eyes tonight, Lord, in the mighty master's name of Jesus Christ. Lord. Let him be used as a vessel, Lord, through you and uh, to you and through you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let you get all.
all the glory, Lord. As we decrease, Lord, let you increase, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Increase in us, Lord. Let your power increase in us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Because we are not the temple of our own. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Our spirit and our physical body belongs to you, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to surrender our souls, which have been contaminated since day one. We ask you, Lord, to take over our souls also, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And we just worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth, Lord. We worship you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. You said you love a worshiper, Lord. But we're here to worship you, you, Lord. We're here to give glory to your name, Lord. We're here to acknowledge you, Lord, in all our ways. Lord, we're here to trust in you, Lord, and not lean on to our own understanding, Lord. We're here to put our faith in you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We we need you, Lord. And we love you, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, brother. You will set us on fire tonight. I had to think about a different song, because everybody that was down, with that prayer there, you should be lifted up. Amen. You should see yourself with a crown already on your head. Amen. Glory be to God. With that right there, we're going to listen to this song right here. Set a fire down in my soul, in your soul. We want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul. You should be asking for God to set a fire down in your soul. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Remember worship. When praises go up, blessings come down. Glory be to God. We enter in, God. We enter in. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving. And to your courts with praise. All that had a hard week. Everyone that went through something this week. I want you to give God the praise. That you're still here today. Because some of everybody on this call. Has lost someone. Everybody on this call. Has been through a storm. Everybody on this call. Had an experience. With life or death. And if you haven't yet, hopefully you prepare. Glory to God. Worship, 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 worship. Get your mind steadfast on God. He's going to do something tonight. He's going to lift your spirit up. Set a fire down in your soul. And that's not watching anything else around you. Not even watching me. Not at the point of worship. 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 Close your eyes and worship your God. And if you don't know who he is, ask him who he is. If you're confused, ask him who he is. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for those that are saved and those that are not saved. I ask now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahweh, Yahshua, glory be to God, that those that are not saved will reach out to either myself or someone else they know to ask them about salvation. What is salvation? Is it a feeling? No, it's not. This is a verbal word, your verbal words. Asking him to come into your heart. Renouncing the enemy, Satan. Knowing that he died for you. For myself. It's not a feeling. It's not a feeling. But you will, as you worship God, be able to feel his presence at times. 
So it's up to you. What are you in this for? Do you believe? Have you had an experience? Because from my knowledge, most people that don't believe is because they haven't had an experience. But you don't always need an experience. Sometimes it just takes your faith. It takes a testimony from someone else. That's why we're going to start giving testimonies once a month. That's why last week we have a testimony service. And a lot of folks have been uplifted, have even been saved through testimony. But it's how bad you want it. It's how bad you're seeking knowledge. We've been doing this for the last year and a half almost now. Every week we haven't missed. Because God says, obey the call. He will give us and show us his all. Glory to God. Here I am before you, falling in love and seeking your truth. Yes, Lord, your perfect grace. Your, his perfect grace has got us to this place. None of us are so great that we can just stand and worship an almighty God that we can't see without his grace, without his mercy. He has forgiven you for your sins. He has forgiven me for my sins. And Father God, for those that haven't even asked today, I just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would forgive their sins. I ask that they would ask you for themselves. We repent now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask that you come in and fill us with your spirit, with your wisdom, with your knowledge, with your understanding. And you said in your word, if those that are lacking understanding ask of you, who gives it to all, liberty and operating now. We thank you now, Lord God, that we're asking through faith. Ask it through faith that you will bless us with wisdom. Wisdom out of this world, but wisdom from you. So that we can make the right decisions at the right time. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray amen. Yes, Lord, we kneel before you now. We thank you for what you have done. We even thank you in the hard times. Because without the hard times... We wouldn't appreciate the good times. Hello, somebody. Hello. I am yours. How many out there that he has brought you out of a storm? How many out there know that you have a testimony? Some haven't even spoken their testimonies. Why is that? We overcome by our testimonies and by the blood of the Lamb. I often have to say that because for some, you don't understand. You could be going through a storm, and guess what? That storm may not have been for something you have done. You have been selected and chosen because you can handle it. And not only that, because someone in your circle need to see that you can come out of that which you have went into. And guess what? It's going to blow them up. It's going to build them up into a place where they're going to feel like they're in a, a helium balloon. They up in the air in the sky float because of your testimony. So holding your testimony in can be holding somebody else down. Here I am. Arms wide open. For those that don't even understand or believe, just open your arms. If you are embarrassed, open your mind and say, God, I don't understand. I don't know you. I've been going through this. I've been struggling in my mind. Who are you? Show me. How is this young man? How is this young lady? How is this child worshiping you? And I don't know you. You should be jealous. He said he went to his own people. His own people rejected him. So guess what? He went to the Gentiles where they received him. His own people couldn't understand because they had money. They had great wealth. They had understanding. And here it is. These broke, busted, disgusted people on the other end. They have nothing, but they was worshiping him. So you know what the world did? The world sent confusion to others and said they only worshiping him because they didn't have anything. 
A person that don't have anything, why would they worship something, believe in something they can't see? I wouldn't. That's not the reason. They felt something. Because they were seeking. Because they was asking. They was looking for something different than what they already had. If you're already rich, you already have all the money that you want. Guess what? You're not going to be seeking for much but more money. So you make the choice. You make the decision. Don't let it be a cold day or even a hot day that you miss the boat and say, I wish I would have listened. It don't hurt to listen. It don't hurt to ask. But it's your choice. It's 8.20. I'm not going to prolong the time because I have a a message that I want to get out and I want to get it all out. I've had the privilege to break things down and edit the last few messages so that I can just give people the meat of what I'm saying. Some folks don't want to listen to the whole hour. And some hour and a half. And some do. It just, just depends on how hungry you are and where you are in your life. Some want 10 minutes. And some just can't listen past 10 minutes. It's just what it is. You're just too busy. But wait till you go to a storm. Wait till a vicissitude hits your house. Then you're going to want everyone to listen to you. So all I got to say, I'm going to put on the instrumental. And I'm going to get started with my uh, message tonight. Father, I just ask that everyone that's under the sound of my voice will take heed to what you're saying through me. The very words, the very oracles that you have given me to speak to your people, that they would hear, Lord God, not just with a natural ear, but with a spiritual ear, that something was set down in their soul. That, Lord God, even after tonight, if they may not understand, they will go back, they will have a dream, and you will bring understanding to them. I thank you now that these words spoken will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that very thing that you set it out to do, to instruct, direct, and guide, and teach your people. In Jesus' mighty master's name, in Yahweh's name, Yahshua, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Amen. For those that haven't listened to the last messages, I suggest that you listen to the one, Wisdom versus Knowledge, part one and part two. And also, the message is only a minute and 49 seconds. Just a nugget. It's God White. Today, I'm going to be talking about or stepping on listening versus hearing. The recap of last week was we spoke concerning knowledge versus wisdom and testimonies this past week. I put something out this morning saying difficult times will come. Oh yeah. Trials and tribulations will come. But he said be of good cheer because he hath overcame them. And you're saying what I said. He have overcame them but I'm still going through. But again, we all know. He said, he that's in you is greater than he that's in this world. So if you can recognize that he is in you, the decision making that you're doing, you have a right and a left and you have yourself. Sometimes it's neither one, sometimes it's you. So you make a decision, you make a choice to make the right choice on purpose because it's right. Difficult times will come, but a way or shelter has already been supplied. A way of escape, if you will. The question is, can you discern the way? Sometimes the bad times produces the best future. Did you get that? Hello, likes. Sometimes the bad times produces the best future. You got to go through to come to. Without a hard spot, 
you can't even recognize the good times. A person has been rich all their life. They don't know what it is to be broke down or poor, sad. They sad is just different from ours. It's on a different pay scale. They sad because they can't get the next woman that they want. They sad because they got AIDS. They sad because they got cancer and they're dying. Most of us are sad because we're broke. Kelly. I'm not talking about you guys, because you guys got a lot of money. But I'm just saying a lot of people out there. But it takes wisdom to know the difference. Anyone remember the three words I pointed out concerning Proverbs a couple weeks ago? The three words is principles, value, and intellect. Yes. P-V-I. Principles, values, and intellect. I'm going to take you on a twist right now. P-V-I. And I'm not talking about the physicians. I'm not talking about just the principles of Proverbs right now. But I'm going to talk about the physicians, the vascular interpretation. That's an exam that pays around $300,000 being about five years into this practice. The vascular system. Keep an attentive ear because this will tie into the message. Just as well as we practice listening and hearing one another. Can I give you a bit of information concerning the PVI? It's the tube for the blood. Let's keep it simple. It's just a tube. The conduit that carries the blood vessels, the arteries carrying the oxygen, as well as veins carrying rich blood back to the heart. We hear people say, oh, God knows my heart. But we do know what the word says, the heart is deceitfully wicked who can know it. You can't. Yes, he knows your heart. And you do too. It carries the rich blood back to the heart, which is the roadway of your circulatory system. Without smoothly flowing blood, without smoothly flowing blood, your body cannot function. We see so many people with blood clots now. And right now, what I'm speaking about, and I bind up everyone that knows someone with a blood clot position. Whoever you know that's in a position is laid up in a hospital with a blood clot. I come against it now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak healing to their body now. I ask for the blood of Jesus to pour inside of them. And if you know someone now, just call their name out. And we speak healing. The book of James in chapter 5 talks about if anyone among you that are sick, call upon the elders of the church. Anoint him with oil. He will be healed and his sins will be forgiven. By faith. Since we've been on this call, we've seen so many miracles. We have a, a few people that got the evidence of speaking in tongues. We got a couple people that got healed from physical conditions. Miracles about seeing things and things are appearing. It's just so many different things. Choose what you believe. Even the conditions such as hardening of the arteries can create a traffic jam in your circulatory system. Think of it like this. A heart that has been hardened will not listen or hear what you have to say. That heart is hardened. Just like Pharaoh and Moses. God kept sending Moses back to Pharaoh. Let the children of Israel go. Tell them that I am, that I am sent you. Cool, I'm going. The God told me to go to Pharaoh. He's going to let the children go. And guess what? Pharaoh's going to let the children go. Bad news. 
He didn't let him go. And this happened time after time after time after time. So, of course, Moses had to get a little bit upset, discouraged, didn't know was God really talking to him. Now, the Bible says God was talking straight to him, direct. But think about it. If you're hearing a voice or if you're hearing something in your inner being telling you to do something, but it's not working, what you going to do? You're going to question it. I can only believe that Moses did the same thing. But when he went back, he heard it go again. He went back, he heard it go again. Guess what? God wanted to see what he's going to obey and keep going. If you know what you know, if you know that you know that you know that it's something that's pushing you to do something, don't give up. You have to keep pushing. You can't stop. You have to push. Glory be to God. Start this song over. Glory be to God. You have to push. The heart has been hardened because of situations. But I often ask God, just in case, I go back to Psalms 51 and 10. I ask God to create me a clean heart. Oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Now the PBI that we just spoke about, the reason why I wanted to bring it up because we was talking about the heart, the flow of blood. Now I'm going to get back to the PVI that I originally spoke about two weeks ago that I briefly spoke on just now. The principles, the values, and the intellect. The principles. Truth that serves as the foundation, which is wisdom. Wisdom is the foundation. Values, the value in searching for wisdom will pay off. Now, some of you know that I said it a little differently two weeks ago. I suggest to go back. Intellect, the understanding of what you're teaching based off of your experience, brings you to a point of knowledge and wisdom. Hello, somebody. Those three things right there can carry you. It will be the good blood cells flowing through your body. And guess what? If you're flowing correctly, even in your digestive system, you're going to feel great about yourself. It's the flow that counts. Do you have a flow? I came up with a brief definition of each letter in the word for Proverbs, in which we've learned its meaning is to be like. The proverb meaning is to be like. The Hebrew word for proverb is nimshel. And again, we went over that two weeks ago, so you can go back and listen. To be like what? One might ask. To be more wise? To be as the book of Proverbs says. Remember, Proverbs is 31 books of wisdom. Wisdom. Proverbs, the P, proving to be the wisdom book. Proverbs are ready to reveal truth and a right way to respond. Proverbs, obedience, oh will show that we understand and respect true wisdom. Proverbs, V, vibrant is being full of energy and enthusiasm because it takes being vibrant to maintain wisdom. Proverbs, E, irulent, also means full of energy but being cheerful as well. Some folks can have energy but still be sad. Some folks can conjure up enough energy to blow their brains out. But you got to be happy. You got to be cheerful as well. Come on, somebody. Proverbs are respectful. Without it, you have no wisdom. How can you say you have wisdom but you can't even respect someone? No. 
Rethink that. Look up the word wisdom. Proverbs. We at B now. Beheaded is what we're seeing happen to folks that respected and didn't respect wisdom. It's something we all wish to avoid. It's something we all wish to avoid. And just because you was respected, don't mean you couldn't be beheaded. You can go somewhere else across the country and talk about this Bible, and guess what? You may get beheaded. But is the word deep down in you? Do you understand what that word is? Have you experienced the very presence of God? And if you haven't, that may be the answer. I can't speak for you. In the last letter in the word Proverbs is S. And it saves. A proverb can save you from the extra heartache and pain through the wisdom you've obtained. Glory to God. Hello, hello lights. I oh, got people sleep out there tonight. A proverb is to be like. Again, to be like what? Wisdom. Scripture. Proverbs 19, 21. 19 and 20. Hear counsel and receive instructions that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Hear counsel and receive instruction. When you have a newborn baby, you're counseling them, you're teaching them, you're giving them instructions on what to do. But guess what? They may not get it all. They might not even understand it. But as you continue, just as we do every week, just as you go to school, as you continue in your latter end, in your older days, you will be able to receive it. You will be able to understand it. Oh, that's what they was talking about. Ah, I got it now. Man, I wish I would have got this 10 years ago. I'd be in a better place. Uh -huh. Make the right choice now. Hello, lights. Are you listening? 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says it best. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I even thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. How many have that testimony alone? You became a man. You was able to think on your own. Don't be a foolish and dumb man. Don't be a foolish and dumb woman. If it's something that you don't understand or believe, research it out. Don't just sit back and say, I just don't believe. That's not wisdom. That's not wisdom. The topic, again, is listening versus hearing. Hearing is simply the act of perceiving sound by the ear. Perceiving sound by the ear. So we can all hear. Hearing is simply the act of perceiving sound by the ear. Listening now is something a little different. It's something you consciously choose to do. How many people have spoken to you and you're listening, but you're really not listening? You heard the, 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 the saying, the term, it goes in one ear, out the other. It's something you chose to listen to. Listening also requires concentration so that your brain can process the meaning from the very words and sentence you heard. How many of us have had the conversation with someone and we either told them, I don't think you're listening. I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying. I don't think you heard me. Oh yeah, we all had that conversation. Just think back. That can be an issue. Well, the difference is they heard you, but they wasn't paying attention. They didn't care too much attention to really listen out what you were saying. Or they probably heard it too many times. 
or it just wasn't resonating on them. Hearing is just that. Hearing and listening is paying enough attention to engage in the conversation, to respond to what they're saying. Yes, we can engage, but how? Yelling back and forth, cursing one another out. No, this is something we must all work at. If the conversation don't go as planned, and someone is getting heated and getting louder, guess what? You, the one with wisdom, need to say, let's calm this thing down. Let's revisit this in an hour. Let's revisit this tomorrow. If that can't be done, maybe go talk to someone else. If that can't be done, maybe you just don't need to be with one another. Hello, likes. Wisdom will show you things that your mind don't even want to comprehend. Wisdom. Listening and hearing with a soft tone while we respond. We're living in a world where so much is going on and our minds are an overload from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed. But guess what? There's no excuses. That's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. We must learn to pay attention to those that are speaking to us. It's nuggets that we may miss out on. It's things that can take us to the next level. It's words that can resonate within us, that can even help us. But we must listen. We must hear. We must pay attention. We must adhere to what they're saying. If it's personal issues they're talking about, that can probably be fixed. Maybe. But without hearing them, you've already failed. Without hearing them, you already failed. It caused more problems than before. Why is that? Most people, when they shut down, they're really saying, I'm done. But I've seen people that shut down and said it was done bounce back. That's why your worst times can produce your better days. But it's totally up to you. You have to be real with self. You have to ask for wisdom. You have to seek wisdom out. Don't get me wrong. You may really be trying to pay attention but get easily distracted. There may be some past hurts that you're holding on to that you haven't asked forgiveness for. You may even have ADHD. If so, there's a fix. It is not medicine. There's prayer and there's practice and passive hearing. Passive hearing. Which is sitting quietly and listening to audio music, television, and practice stopping every so often to call those things back to your remembrance. Focus is the key and focusing on you, not the other person. Stop pointing the other finger. Point the right finger. The other finger is to them. The three fingers pointing back is to you. We work on us Everything else around us will be golden. Some people is just, just plain mean. It's just it. But guess what? You hooked up with that person. So you figured it out. But guess who's hurting? Ultimately, you are. So you have to figure out what it is that you can do. What it is that you can do. Glory to God. 
I need an MC, y'all. This is crazy. But ultimately, what we have to do is continue to work on us and stop worrying about everyone else. Because once we work on us, guess what? Things will get better around us. If we become the light, dark, darkness cannot, darkness will not be able to penetrate the light. Guess what? If the light is bright enough, it becomes hot enough. When it becomes hot enough, it will penetrate and burn through whatever it sets its sight on. Amen. Hello, lights. Hello, lights. Glory to Jesus. Understood that in the presence of God is fullness of joy, is strength for the journey that God You must decide that you want to do better. That you want to listen, that you want to hear, that you're going to just say, today is going to be a day that I'm just going to start listening, and I'm just going to shut my mouth. Today is a day that I'm not going to allow how I feel, my pride, to take over a situation and cause me to fall deeper into suppression and depression. Today, I will decide that I will listen and hear more. Because if you don't, it's going to cause unforgiveness. Unforgiveness causes cancer and everything else. Also, take it a little step further. Unforgiveness shows that you're not growing. I hate to step on someone's toes, but unforgiveness is showing that you're still that child. When I was a child, I thought as a child. You haven't grown from that childish stage yet. So I ask that you will grow now by my voice to you. That you will grow into a place where you can forgive that one that has wronged you. That you will listen to that one that has wronged you. That you will hear by responding to that one that has wronged you. And I got a few things I want to jot down into your mind. Number one is decide. Number two is depend. And number three is obey. Number one, decide. You will never forgive if you wait until you feel like it. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Most people have to go get drunk, go get high, and go back to a person and say they forgive. Would you forgive me? No. Get your mind right and forgive quickly. Choose to obey God and steadfastly resist the devil in his attempts to poison you with bitter thoughts. Because the longer you hold on to unforgiveness, you will produce bitter thoughts. You will say more things to hurt that person. And guess what? You're tearing them down. You're not edifying them. Now, if you tear a person down, it's going to be a boomerang effect. If that person don't come back and tear you down, guess what? Somebody else will. Karma is something else. Don't have karma with your name on it. Hello, lights. Anybody there? I need a flashlight or something so I can make sure I'm not talking to myself. Well, you're here. Glory to Jesus. Here. Amen. 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 Make a qualified decision to forgive, and God will heal your wounded emotions in due time. Matthew 6, 12 through 14. And remember, I always talk about Matthew 14 in particular. Forgiving people for their willful sins, the deliberate sins, the sins that he even may have allowed them to do towards you, to build you up, to get you to a place where things don't bother you so much. Grow up. You need tough skin. Stop allowing everything to bother you. You are not weak. You're not a victim. You're victorious. You have been chosen. Everyone that hears me now has been chosen. Has been selected to be victorious. No matter the situation. You are victorious. I speak that now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are victorious. 
Glory to Jesus. Number two, depend. You cannot forgive without the power of the Holy Spirit. Some folks may say, well, I don't have the Holy Spirit. Yes, you do. The Holy Spirit is a conviction of us. You know when you're hurting. You know when something is right or wrong. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit that's the tongue that some of you don't believe. Because guess what? It hasn't reached you yet. But have you been seeking? That's another conversation. It's too hard to do it on your own. That's the reason why the Holy Spirit needs to be there. It needs to be planted in your heart. If you are truly willing, God will enable you, but you must humble yourself and cry out to him for help. That's the problem that most people are not doing. They're not crying out. God, we need you now, Lord God. It's people right now that's listening to me, Lord God. It's people that's under the sound of my voice, Lord God. You have given me these words to speak. These very words from you, from the throne room of heaven. Lord, have them to have the spirit of forgiveness. Give them a soft heart. You said in your word in Ezekiel 36, you were give them a clean heart. Lord God, you would, you would take out that stony heart and sprinkle clean water on them. You would give them a heart of flesh. Lord, for everyone that's asking, Lord God, even secretly, I ask that you would change them tonight in the name of Jesus. You will be changed tonight. Glory to Jesus. In John 20, verses 22 and 23, Jesus breathed on the disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. His next instruction was about forgiving the people. Ask God to breathe the Holy Spirit on you. So that he can forgive those who hurt you. That's the only way. So I even ask now that the Holy Spirit will grab hold to you. Oh Jesus. Glory to Jesus. That you will find a soft spot in you that you can forgive. And while you're forgiven to shut your mouth and listen. And respond with a soft tone. The presence of God. As I was praying earlier for everyone on this call, everyone that joined, I prayed. And I see an angel. And that angel is here tonight. I asked him to be here tonight when I began to speak for everyone that's here that he would touch them. In a special way. that they would know that it was touched by God. Yes, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Number three is obey. The word tells us several things we're to do concerning forgiving our enemies. Number one. Pray for your enemies and those who abuse and misuse you. That's the most important thing. We tend to forget that we need to still pray for those that dogged us out. Pray for those that said wrong things to us. Pray for those that stole from us. We think that the ones that did us wrong, we need to get them back. And vengeance is not yours, it's the Lord's. We don't always need to think. That it's up to us to get a person back. It depends what that situation is. It depends on how you want to repay a person back for doing you wrong. It depends on what that is. But what I'm saying to you is vengeance is not yours, but it's the Lord's. Allow God to do his part. And don't you have an ego and try to do it yourself. Edging God out is not the way. Keeping God on your soul, on your side, in your soul, rather, will elevate you, will exalt you. The humble person, the humble man, the humble woman, you will be exalted by giving it to God. Obey. 
Number two, pray for their happiness and welfare. Luke, 20, Luke 6, actually, 27 and 28. As you pray, God give themselves revelation. Give them revelation so you would bring them out of deception. Most people don't know. They're deceived. But he's holding us accountable because we know better. You got to give them Galatians 6 and 1. If anyone among you, if anyone around you that have sinned of any sort, you that are spiritual, restore him. You have to. You know better. Do you know that those that's following the path of Christ, those that are seeking righteousness, the right way of living, the right way of thinking, the right way of doing, it's harder for us because we got to back down so many times and sometimes you just want to bust their head. But because of who you are called to be now, because 20, 30 years ago, 10 years ago, two years ago, six months ago, last week, today you are a different person. If that person could have caught you before time, it would have been a different story. But guess what? You might have been locked up as well. You might be dead. So glory be to God that you are still here, that you're able to hear me now. They may not even be aware that they hurt you. Or maybe they're aware. Maybe they are. Maybe they can just be self-centered. Maybe their heart that God talks about in Ezekiel 36, that stony heart, need to be overturned. Maybe we ought to pray for their heart to be a heart of flesh. A heart that God can penetrate, talk to. But it's going to be through our prayers, our faith, our steadfastness. We got to know that God hears us. We got to be obedient. I can go on and on about the things that God has done for me in my life, but we've done, we did that testimony. I even got more. I have a lot of them. Maybe that's the reason why I'm here talking to you guys. I don't know. I never chose to do this. This wasn't my, okay, this is what I want to do. It was some people out there that wanted to preach. They wanted to be an evangelist. They wanted to be a prophet, a teacher. I never asked for it. But guess what? I'm honored that he chose me. Those that read their word, those that seek God out, are you honored that you're doing it? Just because you're going through that storm, the storm don't last long. We can man do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your morning is now. Receive it. Your morning is now. Amen. See. Number three. Bless and do not curse them. Romans 12 and 14. Whatever they say to you, you have to be strong. You have to stand your ground. Again, we remain do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Again, this race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but those that can endure. And guess what? When you endure, it's a prize for you in the end. Mercedes put something out earlier about the prize. God is coming back with his prize, with his gift for you. Every chain will be broken. Every tear that cried will dry up. Every nose that dripped will dry up. Every heart that was broken will be made happy. Every downtrodden person will stand tall with their shoulders back, walking, marching in attention. Because your Savior will have called your name. Your name would have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you, you may look back and see some of the others that's not there. And you will have a tear for that one or that group or that family member because they didn't make it. 
So we have the opportunity now to pray for them. To wheel them in. To ask God to bring them understanding. And sometimes when God brings them understanding, just know that they may go through a trial, a storm. We can't always get a person out of a storm. They have to go through their test. They have to go through their trial. We're to pray for God's will for their lives. We can't pray for God to get them out of it. We can't pray for just another job. God may not want you on a job. God may have put something in your mind for you to start a business. We must pray for God to supply us with increase. So we can continue on our journey. Praying the right prayers matters much. He said, I will give you the desires of your heart. What is that, Psalms 37 to 4? But what is your desires? Your desires may not match up with his. So you must ask for his perfect will. Your desire may want that young man. Your desire may want that young lady. And guess what? That may, be not, that may not be God's desire. He may see the heartache and pain on down the line, but yet you crying for this person. Ask God for his will. Ask God for his plan and purpose for your life. Ask God that your desires will line up with his desires. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus. Again, bless that person, don't curse them. In the Greek, to bless means to speak well of, and to curse means to speak evil of. You can't walk in forgiveness and gossip. We must stop repeating that offense. A lot of people gossip about everything. It's a setup. When someone calls you and say, hey, they know your man, your woman was cheating on you. They know this man or this woman says something negative towards you. Hey, so what's going on, man? Hey, how's it going, Mark? I'm doing good. Hey, you talk to um, Tim? Y'all talk to Tim. Yeah, he's still up in the same old stuff, isn't he? Yes, he is. You know what? And you know what? Conversation needs to stop right there. It seems we got that far. Hey, Susan, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. What about Butch? He cheated on you lately. You know, he was no good. I told you about him before. Girl, you know. Stop now. Say, Butch is great. The Bible says to call those things and not as they were. We need to set Butch on the right place in our speaking. He may not be in the right place now, but you need to call those things and not as they were. It's up to you. You have a choice. Now, if you don't want Butch anymore, that's a different story. Proverbs 17 and 9 says that he who covers an offense seeks love. The Amplified Version says he who covers and forgives an offense seeks love, but he who repeats or harps on a matter separates even his closest friends. Let that stuff go. Stop talking about the same thing. Should you forgive? You should know the answer to that now. Don't wait for the other person to forgive, ask for forgiveness. You do it. Forgive quickly. The quicker you do it, the easier it is. Matthew 10, 8 talks about that. Forgiving freely. Freely you shall receive, freely you shall give. Matthew 18, 19. Peter asked the Lord, how often shall I forgive my brothers for his sins against me? He says 70 times 7. Do you know 70 times 7 a day? You might as well just give up, put your hands up, wash them. You mean to tell me I got to forget? Hey, don't even get to the point where you have to ask for forgiveness. Just like, you know what? Hey, you got it. No fight. No fight. You got it. No fight. In my closing. Time is. Nine, oh four. In my closing, we need to listen to our mates. We need to ask for forgiveness from our mates. 
Not having wisdom can cause a road of destruction and repeats in our life. Not having forgiveness in our heart can cause sickness to come and live in your body. Not having forgiveness in your heart can cause you to always be angry. I ask now that you will receive and accept this word tonight on listening and hearing the wisdom of God through forgiveness. And that you will come to a place of resolve in your heart. And that you will Get better acquaintance with yourself. And that yourself, again, as I said before, if you don't like it, change it. You may not like what you see when you look at yourself in the mirror. But it's always something you can do to change. But guess what? It's up to you. It's up to you. Now, if anyone... Again, that's on here that don't understand salvation, that want to be saved, please speak up. And if you are ashamed to speak up now, reach out later to either myself or someone else that you know. And we go through the Romans 10. All right. Anyone else on this call that did Dante ever join? Dante? All right, well, last week we was praying and the Lord had showed me that it was a big piece of paper and I seen someone signing it and Dante said it was him. But I'll let him tell you the rest. Um, what else? I think I had a Another testimony. Um, I've been waiting on the VA to call me since January. I've been calling them each month since January, actually. And it's a different story each time. Today was the first day I received a phone call from the VA. It wasn't me calling them. I spoke to a young lady named Sky yesterday. And I said, your name is going to send my message to the sky. And it's going to bounce back to me. She started laughing. But remember, life and death is in a powder tongue. You can attract what you want by speaking to it. I got a phone call by a young man from the VA today. So as of right now, everything is going accordingly. So praise God for that. Now I'm going to open up the floor for you guys. To see if any of you want to um, give a testimony or speak about anything specific. No? I'll share something. <clears throat> so, um, I'm getting ready to graduate, which is good. Praise God. And also, uh, my spiritual mother told me that not only that I'm graduating in the natural, but I'm graduating in the supernatural, that God's going to take me to another level. Amen. So we're waiting for that. So, so. Amen. Yeah, it's Amen. I believe it as well, and I'm standing in agreement with you on that. Amen. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. Anyone else? Um, I don't have a testimony. I just wanted to say that. Uh, yeah, you got a testimony. You, I know when you. <laughs> you and Dante. I told you, you and Dante. I wanted to uh, beat you guys you down. Just took it out of my mouth. Huh? Um, I said you just took it out of my mouth. <laughs> um, you know, um, in the beginning of, I think it was Monday. I don't know if it was Monday or Tuesday. Um, you know, I've been going through some. I don't know if I would call it warfare at work, but there's just a lot going on. And, you know, um, 
I feel like my journey this last probably um, year and a half has been just, um, you know, things going on at work, and I just feel like that's been like a constant battle for me, um, you know, and going through, you know, all chapters and scriptures every Thursday has really helped support that because I've learned so much about myself and my leadership, and uh, but this last Monday, I believe, I, I literally broke down, and I just want to thank uh, Derek, Dante, and Etan, I call him E, um, <laughs> for just being there to lift me up, because, you know, they were all on the phone with me, and just encouraging me to just be strong, and, you know, I one thing that I have been in, on this journey is patience, learning about being patient, because, like, you know, we said before, you know, God will show up, you know, and he definitely did this week, you know, he showed up for me, and, and I've learned, I'm learning, I shall say, to be patient, and, and, and learning to wait, you know, back, probably two years back, I, I said it in one of my testimonies, I suffer from depression and anxiety, and, I was so quick to react when something went wrong, but now I've learned to just kind of lay low and just let things take its place and, you know, go to God, and eventually I know he's going to sh- show up because he's always going to have my back, you know, and I felt like that happened this week. But, you know, I just want to thank you guys for just being there because I was able to, I felt so relieved after that conversation, and it was, you know, just based upon, you know, prayer and just having space and and for me you know that was just it's always good to know that there's people out there that can pull you back up and you know you said it through your you know your sermon tonight your bible teaching is you know we're going to go through all the tough times we definitely are it's not an easy walk and and i've seen everyone's transformation on this call like I, i i'm with Derek a lot of the time and i hear about some of the stories and how at the end they get the bigger blessing and you're going to go through things but you just got to continue to seek him and and stay in and stay in your lane stay in your course and just continue mm-hmm. to have faith and you know I'm grateful for what I've been through I'm grateful for this journey I'm grateful for even my downs in my life because now just knowing that I was a person that back then went through depression and anxiety and I was so lost that you know you mentioned the mirror and I remember once upon a time when I was in a deep depression I would have all the lights off in my home because I couldn't look at myself in the mirror Mm. and knowing that I've been through that I can help others and you know recently this last week I've had about four or five people reach out to me that are battling that Mm. and with the help of God I can help them get to it Oh, very Amen. grateful, and I'm so grateful for him every day, and I make sure that the first thing I say when I wake up is, thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything that you've given me and, and continue to work through in my life. Hallelujah. Wow. Glory to Jesus. You know, it's only, it's amazing because Mercedes didn't know anything about it, or oh, this walk, and it's funny because... A friend of mine was on a radio station and it was talking about being equally yoked. Can a person be equally yoked? And if you're not equally yoked when you meet a person, you shouldn't get involved with the person. And I said, I beg a different. So I had to write something on it. And you can. It's by choice. Because when we were born, all of us wasn't to the spot or the place we were in now. All of us can, can't say that we believe in Christianity. We, we didn't believe in Catholicism. We didn't believe in, you know, walking with the monks. You know, who's ever out there that can hear me? If you are a Muslim, a monk, um, a part of the, the, the Catholic movement, Christianity, whatever you're part of, you just didn't wake up and had a change in your life. You woke up being a product of your environment. Some woke up being that because you was brought into that from your family. But it's a lot of folks that did research. It's a lot of Muslims that switched over to Christianity. A lot of these religions are man-made. 
but we just got to realize that, hey, we got to seek that which we can feel within our spirit, that which we can cling to, that which has spoken back to us. And guess what? That's the thing. That's the one. That's the one religion that you're going to stick to. But just being a product in your environment is just not enough. You must do your own research and figure out what's, what's what. That's the true seekers. So that's the reason why I created that blog, www.theshirtlesspreacher.com. And I just started it, so if any of you guys want to get on there and start discussing things, feel free. But it's amazing because I told Mercedes before to um, try her best to keep calm because help is on the way. And she was worried about a store. And lo and behold, God did it. Sent someone there and she came back finally the other day and everything was done like she liked it. And I'm saying how she, like she liked it because she's a stickler. I could never work for her. <laughs> but she's like my mother. I would never work for my mother neither. But again, Dante, I said, Dante, don't worry about your job. Man, D, I'm getting laid off. I don't know what to do because, you know, there's rent. I'm like, hey, please, please don't tell me about the rent. We all pay the same. You know, we, we almost at three grand. But I said, God going to have a ram in the bush. He was like, man, D, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm like, I'm telling you. The union going to open back up. Man, I don't know. The writers want a million dollars, more than a million dollars now. I said, it's going to open up. Well, last time they did this, it's a year. Excuse me, they landed us off for a year. I said, no, they're not. It's going to be about a week or two. How about it was, wasn't even, I believe, a week. And he's back to work. Same thing with another testimony, but I want that person to give me the, the okay to speak about it, so I'm not going to speak about it. So I'm not going to bring the name up. Well, what happened? But um, anyone else want to say something before we end? Yeah, the uh, yeah. Good, Shabbat. How are you? Um, what's going on, Derek? This is Chavez. How are you? What's up, Chavez? I thought that was your voice. Yeah, that was my voice for a second. <laughs> um, well, I don't really have no, you know, testimony. I just, I just. You know, just go and put it out there that the guy has been good, you know. Um, well, last month on April 24th, um, I, a little bit before April 24th, I applied for a job online. I was waiting, for, I was telling mom, you know, I need a job or whatnot. And she said, you know, just, just keep waiting. The guy, the guy's going to come up and show up. And he did. Hmm. So, I, um, within the same, within the same day I applied, actually, I applied for like three or four jobs. Two mm -hmm. jobs called me back. And I started, so now I have a eight to five job I go to every day now. Wow. Um, every day I go to it now. Wow. Man, that's the job the one, glory. And then the other one was, um, I, uh, you know, I've been, I've been looking, I've been searching around for, you know, Things to things to move. I just like you've been saying that um, um, just strategic planning. Right. So I just been I just been looking and looking and you know I I went online went on Kempler uh, uh, apartmentfinders dot com. But today I was at work. I was going to get it was almost time for me to go. My phone on. and I was like I answered it. A lady was like um, you apply for an apartment over at Forest Park, with the town I used to live in, and I was like yeah. And she was like, okay, she was like, come, come Sunday at 12, we have an open house. The rain is 450, only bring two paycheck stubs. Um, basically, she was saying, if I bring the money, she would give this. Wow. And that's been your desire. Yeah. That's been your heart's desire to, to be out on your own. And man, I pray now that God will continue to bless you and give you the wisdom needed to continue to move forward in him. And as you move forward in him, that he would open up great and mighty and wide doors for you. That it would shock you that you would cry and cry and cry in thanksgiving towards him.
In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, Amen. Then I have, I have one more. Then I have one more. I'm sorry. Um, so I don't know. I was listening to like to R and B music one day. Um, I've been meaning to call you and ask you this. Um, I've been, like, you know, I've been listening. To, I was listening to R and B just, you know, just doing my job. And then all of a sudden, a gospel song came on out of nowhere. It, it came on out of nowhere. It cut the huh? it, it cut the music off in the middle of the music, the song. Yeah, in, in the middle of the R and B song, the gospel song came on. So ever since then, on my way to work, I listen to nothing but gospel every day. That's my routine now. You know the blessing of it is? Is that you was obedient enough to take that warning, take that heed. Just as we talked before, when me, you, and Donna was on the phone for a couple hours, when me and you was on the phone, you kept seeing a silhouette of Jesus. And it wasn't just a silhouette, you was awake. While we was talking, you were seeing it. And it wouldn't go away. Guys, he was on the phone. We was on the phone talking about something, we started talking about God, and it just shifted, and it was a figure of, and the reason why we say Jesus, let me clear this up, because we hear about Jesus in a white robe, he didn't see a face, he just seen a white robe, and it was his presence there that had us in just such an awe. So the Lord has been dealing with Chavez, and the Lord has He has a door that's open for you. And as you continue to be obedient for what we talked about, the Lord said He's gonna do something for you. You're gonna have another testimony in about three months from now. And the testimony in about three months from now is gonna make everybody on this phone say, Wow, because of your obedience. But you're gonna to have to stay there. You're gonna to have to stay in this place. And it's gonna get hard at times. You're gonna to have to remember these very words. Just as He showed us before. Remember, be vigilant, be sober. And be watchful of what he said, and you're gonna see great mighty things. Amen. Amen. Glory. You there, Shabazz? Yeah, I'm here. I hear you. Yeah. So just stay, uh, stay obedient. Whatever you gotta do, push. Push. Okay. Pray until something happens. Push. Push. You got anything else? No, no, I'm done. All right, thanks. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to say something quick. I won't make it long. I wanted to, uh, Thank God for getting us down there safely, doing what he did while we were down there. Yes. Making it easy for me to be able to do what I love to do best, which is give. Right, 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 right. And not even take a dime out of my pocket to do so. Mm. He blessed us all down there. We had a great time, which was not even anything negative. Mm. Yeah, and the blessing of that was on our way down there, like Rodney, aka Spunk. He said that for the two and a half hour ride, if that ride down there was all that we had, it was worth it. Speaking about God. And then Wayne, being so free and happy, it was just another place. It was like we was in a different space. And when an enemy tried to come in and snatch that out, immediately it was gone. And I just thank God.
What's his name? Elder Mike. Elder Mike. How old was his cousin? He was young, huh? Well, I'm not sure. I just got the text not too long ago. He just showed up. Father, we come before you now, Lord God, as a body. We just ask that you will raise up Elder Mike, Lord, Lord God, and his family, Father God, and the parents, Lord God, of his cousin, Father. And we know not the hour, Lord God that you shall come, Lord God, and ask us and call us home. But we just thank you right now, Lord God, that you will give them the peace that surpasses peace of this world, Lord God, that you will cover their minds, Lord God, you will cover their spirits, Lord God, with joy, Lord God. And Father God, we don't know what the cause was, Lord, but we just ask that you will give them, Lord God, a divine revelation of what's going on, Lord God, and what it is that they need to do now while they're left behind. We thank you right now, Lord God, that all of us even here that's on this call that's left behind, Lord God, that our greater purpose, Lord God, will be moved upon, Lord God, with the very thoughts that you have placed in our spirit and mind, Lord God. We will continue to move, Lord God, as you have called us to, Lord God, and that we will not be taken from this place prematurely. That, Lord God, we will do exactly what you called us to do in the time that you called us to do it. In Jesus' mighty master's name, Lord God, that we will continue to move swiftly, Lord God, as we hear, Lord God, as Severus even heard, Lord God, when that music changed, he just immediately changed his beat as well. We ask that you would change our tone, Lord God, as we hear things, Lord God, that come in our way, Lord God, as a distraction, Lord God, but yet it's not a distraction, Lord God. It is a change of tone. We thank you that the change of tone, that the change of frequency, Lord God, will be upon us, Lord God, and we shall hear. You said, he that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, to us, and we shall move. You said, your sheep hear your voice, and we are here, Lord God, with great ears, Lord God. We have great ears, Lord God, and not just the small ears as a mere human, Lord God, but the ears, Lord God, in the spiritual realm, that we can hear greatly what you're saying, loud and clear. And we just thank you, Lord God, right now for the family, Lord God, that he will continue, Lord God, to move on in your word. And Father God, this was not discouraging, Lord God. But we just lift him up, Lord God, with the arms of Aaron. In Jesus' mighty master's name we pray. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right, to next week. And next week we um, we still gonna be on Proverbs because there's so much to talk about in Proverbs. And again, those that haven't heard, I put a maybe a 10 minute video up on wisdom versus knowledge on Facebook, and I believe it's also on my um, Google. You can probably find it under www.theshirtlesspreacher.com. And also, it's part one and part two. And I'm talking about um, the introduction of Proverbs. And you will get a better understanding of what the Greek word of Proverbs is, nimshel, and the difference between knowledge and wisdom. All right. If that's it, anyone else? Donovan, when you do the honors? Yeah, Derek, this is Myra. How are you? Hey, Myra. Hey, how are you? Just excellent traveling monkey players. I'm getting ready to do an entire month on the road. I'm starting with New Orleans tomorrow, and after New Orleans, home a couple of days, then I go to um, Chicago, and then after Chicago, I go to Anaheim. Wow. So I'll be going an entire month in May, so just keep me right keep me in your prayers wow wow yes 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 i just pray that the lord will, will use you in those places where you are so not only that you're going to make money but you're going to be a blessing as well so you can receive a bigger blessing amen glory to god in jesus name i pray amen amen mm, that's good wow <laughs> that's a lot well, you getting you having what I had in the past doing the radio frequency engineering, free trips. 
Oh, yeah. different states. Yep. So normally, I, I, like I said before, I ask you, you want to come, just let me know, because, you know, I'm going to have my room, and I'm always gone all day, so. Right. Well, let me know then. Yep. Oh, yeah. Especially I'll call you back and give me the date. Okay. All right. All right. Anyone else? All right. All right, um, my main man, Donovan, you wanted to do the honors? Yes, uh, you want to close out? Yeah. All right, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> All right, Abba Father, Abba Father, in the name of your son, Yeshua Christ, I'm Nazarene, Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this Bible study call, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for the testimonies where we overcome by uh, our testimonies and by the blood of the Lamb, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for each and every soul, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for lifting up all of us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for letting the, uh, letting the prophets speak your word out tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for anointing all of us, Lord, where we are a chosen generation, Lord, a royal priesthood, Lord. We are ambassadors for Christ, Lord. We are champions for Christ, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this awesome Thursday night, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing for Brother Chavez, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Christ. We thank you, Lord, for just what you're doing for Sister Mercedes, for Sister Myra, for uh, Brother Wayne, and so on and so forth, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. You get the glory out of it, Lord. Yes, Lord. As we walk into our destinies, Lord, as we do all things that you call us to do, Lord, you get the glory out of it. God, you get the glory because you created us. You're the one that brought us back home to the kingdom of heaven, Lord. You're the one that let us operate from heaven, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for letting us sit on the footstool, Lord, and let our enemies underneath our school, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we have the power, dominion, authority in your name, that we have power to tread upon serpents and scorpions in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we get to pray and we and we call out things as if it was weren't, as if it weren't, as if it was in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that we're destined to reign in Christ Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us reign with you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making the kingdom of heaven for us to be with you, Lord, forever and ever, Lord, for you are who is who is and who was and who is to come, Lord. You shall reign forever and ever, Lord. And we just want to give you the glory, Lord. We just want to give you the honor, Lord. We just want to honor you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We just want to praise you, Lord, and worship you, Lord, in spirit and truth, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the zealousness and the boldness that you gave us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for letting us testify in your name. We thank you, Lord, for letting us bear witness in your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for letting us be witnesses for Christ, Lord, to let us be evangelists and teachers and prophets for Christ, and so on and so forth, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be servants, Lord, for you are the servant of the servants, Lord, and you're teaching us how to be servant of the servants, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for this sonship, this fellowship, this partnership, this relationship, Lord, this intimacy, this marriage between the bridegroom and the bride, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for coming back to come get us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be patient, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us chase the high calling of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us run this race with patience, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your never-ending love, that love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious, love is not jealous, love is not boastful, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for each and everything, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us walk in the Spirit, which is walking in love, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for letting us preach the, the, of the fire of the Holy Ghost, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to preach your word, Lord, for we are living epistles, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for letting us be barley, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, for our harvest is now nigh, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We neither wheat nor tares, but we are barley, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for letting us be barley in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for looking at us, Lord, as as you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for letting us, uh, for seeing the seed of Christ inside us, for, for seeing us as Christ, Lord, and not of our own, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We belong to you and only you, Lord, and we give you the most high praise for the most high God, El Shaddai, Lord. Thank you, God Almighty, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, El Elyon. Thank you, Yeshua, salvation, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being our salvation, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being our Savior, our Redeemer, our Deliverer. Thank you, Lord, for being our Healer, our Provider, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Without you, we, we can't do nothing, but with you, we can do all things, Lord. And we thank God, Lord, that we can do all things through you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for pruning me and pruning others, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. For this is pruning season, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. This is miracle season in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm, yes. Testimony season in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. This is hey, glory to God. 
what you call us to be, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the year of 5777, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Rest, completion, and perfection in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us rest, Lord, for letting us labor, letting us rest in our labor, Lord, and we don't have to labor no more, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, for you are the Sabbath, Lord. You are the day, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, mm. Lord. And all we got to do is rest in your bosom, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, and continually to stay in your bosom, to continue to stay in the presence of the Most High God, to stay in the Holy of Holies, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for tearing that veil, Lord, that we can be in the Holy of Holies, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being the sound of the trumpet, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being the ram's horn, for you are the ram's horn, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. When you were crucified, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the trumpet sounded, Lord, at, at the third hour, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, at the ninth hour, Lord, in the mighty master's name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for being that Lamb of God, our Jubilee, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being our Messiah, Lord, our sent one, the anointed one, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you, Lord, for being Almighty God. Thank you, Lord, for being the love of God. Thank you, Lord, for being the Father of all fathers and the fathers of the fatherless, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that everybody that's under the sound of my voice will hear your words, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. This is not my words. This is the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And we love you, Lord, and we praise you, and we give you glory, and we love you forevermore with all our hearts, mind, all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength, Lord, and we forever do, Lord, for the joy of the Lord is our strength, Lord, and this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's be glad and rejoice in it, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for we don't abide in our strength, but we abide in your strength, Lord, that we are giant slayers, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that we are already in the promised land, Lord, that you took us out of the wilderness and put us in the promised land. And thank you, Lord, for strengthening us in the wilderness, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And now let us start from our power of promised land, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, and we give you praise. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> Alrighty. All right, so I guess we can um, recap this next week. And um, hopefully everyone have a good week. And see you guys next Thursday. Amen. Amen.